Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about what's happened in Spain over the last week or so while I go for a walk around this magnificent location. Do you know where I am? Let's go. Now, if you haven't been able to guess, I am in Tenerife, the magnificent island of Tenerife. It's about 8.30 in the morning. The sun is just starting to come up over the mountain there. I think it's a mountain anyway. And uh, as you can see here with the black sand beaches, a very, very attractive place to be today. Now I'll get the weather out of the way first, but as you can imagine, absolutely perfect weather here. Because I imagine this is the place where the weather is great one day, but perfect the next. And the fact that I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt for this time of the year tells you just that. Absolutely fantastic weather, especially the nighttime temperatures. And that's one of the big differences between mainland Spain and this part of the world, I imagine, because although the weather at the moment is good in Madrid also, around 24, 25 degrees Celsius, at night it gets down to around six, seven, eight, nine degrees, whereas here last night it was about 17 or 18 degrees Celsius, and uh, that is the difference. And let's be honest, that's the reason that people come to the Canary Islands for the weather. A couple of women down there taking advantage of the views to get their yoga session out of the way. Now you can get an idea of the types of businesses that we've got in this part of Tenerife. Uh, all English speaking businesses there. Italian, Indian restaurant, Chinese restaurant, night and day Italian restaurant, and of course the famous mini markets where they sell souvenirs, beach articles, drinks, and ice cream. In fact, this is a place where you hear more foreign languages than you do Spanish, which uh, is also incredible. The Tasca Bandido, one of the places offering authentic Canarian food, which is not bad. Now, I said before that you hear a lot of languages spoken here, but not much Spanish, and uh, even signs looking for things are in English. Although, if you can understand what that sentence says, you're better than me. Because English grammar is obviously not that person's strong suit. So, what has been happening in Spain this week? Well, it was all about politics earlier in the week. There was a no confidence vote launched by the radical right party Vox. An unsuccessful no confidence vote because it didn't go very far and uh, basically they wasted everybody's time. They dragged out a 90 year old former politician, uh, somebody who was prominent back in the Franco days, a communist originally, not sure if he has changed his ideology, but uh, he got up and uh, addressed the parliament and uh, tried to convince Pedro Sanchez that he's going in the wrong direction. But uh, as I said, wasn't successful. And it was just another example of how ridiculous Spanish politics is at the moment. And so ridiculous was this no confidence vote that the main opposition party, the PP, didn't even take part. They abstained, weren't interested, and that of course gave fuel to the Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, and he got stuck into them as well. Just a quick look at the vegetation that we have here in the Canaries. Magnificent. So a week of absolutely ridiculous politics in Spain this past week. But of course, as we know, we are in an election year and political parties are doing everything they can to try and destabilize the current government. But uh, as we all know, they do a fairly good job by themselves of that. Somebody behind me taking an early morning swim, enjoying the fantastic warm Atlantic Ocean. Or at least I think it's warm by the amount of people that were having a swim yesterday. Now, another interesting thing to come out of this no confidence vote during the week was that Pedro Sanchez basically said that uh, for the next elections, he's going to join up with Yolanda Diaz, who currently belongs to the Podemos group, I think. And uh, Podemos is not happy about that. They uh, don't want to be excluded. But I think it's a plot by the Prime Minister to get the radicals out of the government. You could argue whether or not Yolanda Diaz is a radical politician, but compared to some of the other Podemos politicians, she's pretty tame. And basically, I think history will remember the Podemos time in government as a time of botched policies. For example, when it comes to that only yes is yes law, a botched policy. Also with the animal welfare law, you could also say that that is a botched policy because some of the most important things weren't included in that policy. So that is what Podemos has done over the last three or four years. Basically nothing. But hey, that's just my opinion and I'm sure that other people will have a completely different opinion about what Podemos has done and whether or not they have been successful. Now as I said a couple of minutes ago, and most of you guys know this already, that 2023 is an election year here in Spain. That's the reason for that no confidence vote the other day. And also we're seeing in the press that many, many promises are being made by both the government and also the main opposition party, the PP. For example, when it comes to taxes, the Partido 
Popular thinks that it can get back into government this year. And uh, of course, lowering taxes is going to be their number one policy. Because here in Spain, under the current government, taxes have gone up over the last year or so. In fact, I think that Spanish taxpayers are currently paying more taxes than they have done in a long, long time. So the main opposition party, the PP, thinks that by promising to lower taxes, they'll get re-elected. I don't know, time will tell. But I reckon they've got a fairly good chance. Player de la arena. Spectacular. Now the other thing dominating the press currently in Spain is a severe bushfire or wildfire in the Mediterranean area of Castellon, out of control, and uh, no surprises that it was a result of human intervention. Apparently some people were working in the area, carrying out some works, and uh, somehow a fire started and it got out of control very, very quickly. In fact, I think some 4,000 hectares of land in Castellon has gone up in flames and around 2,000 people, I believe, had to be evacuated. So a terrible fire in Castellon down there in the Valencian community. Another example of just how spectacular the views are here. And imagine living in one of these houses, how lucky the owners must be. And just getting back to that fire, one of the surprising things is just how early the fire season has started in Spain this year. I mean, we're not even at the end of March and severe bushfires already ravaging parts of the country. But of course, when you get unseasonably hot weather and uh, very strong winds, then bushfires are always going to happen, especially if somebody starts the fire. And again, a fire causing havoc in that part of Spain. There was a severe fire last year in that part of the country. And again, as I said, starting early this year. And is it just me or is the Mediterranean prone to severe flooding and severe fires? I don't know, it could be something else, right? But anyway, let's hope that the fire brigade can get this fire in Castellon under control as soon as possible. And let's hope we don't have as many fires this year as we have had in Spain in recent years. But uh, as I said, starting early this year, and it's not looking good. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. I'm off to enjoy my day here in Tenerife. Take advantage of the fantastic weather. So I'll see you then. Hasta luego. Vamos a ver dónde los vigilantes, ¿eh? Ahí están los suceros. Cajita.